Hey guys, I thought this was kind of funny. I was looking at some Sony earbuds and headphones and um, yeah, they, they, uh, they, 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 some of them match my target pretty well um, and I kind of wanted to talk about that. So here we have the Sony um, WH-XM3s and the Sony WF-XM4s. Um, the WH means basically over-ear headphones like these that I'm wearing, except they're closed back in orange. So this is a closed back over-ear headphone that follows my target pretty well, especially for a closed back uh, over-ear headphone. Those typically have pretty wonky bass, and this is, you know, it, it's a bit wonky, but I mean, it's, it's passable. Uh, for situations where you're just wearing the headphones outside, you know, out and about or walking around the house. You're not critical listening. You're not, you know, Sony's known for having some pretty strong bass. Um, and then we look at the highs. I mean, yeah, the highs are a little bit lumpy and deteriorated and they roll off the air frequencies. Um, but I mean, I've seen a lot worse, especially for over ear closed back headphones. So if we kind of just trace over this, I mean, it follows my target pretty well. I mean, it's a little bit wonky here and there, but for an over-ear closed back headphone, you know, that's not too bad. It's, uh, and then we see they have the in-ear monitors, the WFXM4s. These have, of course, much smoother, better tuned bass and mid bass and mids, and they're much smoother in the treble. Uh, I, I did notice that the XM4s are a bit shouty at 5K, and when you use different EQ presets, this region actually gets even more prominent. So it kind of shoots up here, and then it kind of goes down like this. So I wouldn't buy the XM4s because they're too prominent at 5K. They got this 8K peak problem, and they, you know they got some shimmeriness here, which is not that big of a deal. But I, I'm just not a fan of 5K peakage. I prefer a nice treble bubble like this. I, I don't like, you know, f you know, the, the, this peakage or, you know, even on the smoother in-ear monitors, this peakage is too much for me. Um, but I just thought, you know, this looks really close to my target. But if you had, if you lowered your standards and, you know, you wanted to just get in the ballpark and kind of skirt the line of my target, I, I thought these were very similar. Now, again, I use these. I, we can see it's much cleaner much smoother so this is kind of like the ghetto sony is kind of like the ghetto and then biodynamic dt990s with worn ear pads and sim m 6 l are like pristine clean smooth transparent versions of these lumpy funky you know slightly off-tuned equivalents um when we switch back and forth we can see just how similar they are in a lot of ways but the Biodynamic DT990s and EM6L are just a lot cleaner. Um, that's all I wanted to say. Um, I just thought it was funny uh, how similar they were. Um, you may be wondering, like, why didn't I show some of the, 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 the more new Sony stuff, like the Sony um, XM5s. And we can see the Sony XM5s here in orange. Um, you know, they're really shouty. Um, so, I mean, we can look at the XM4s and we can see, you know, they, they're, they're, they have issues. We can take away my stuff. And we can see as Sony came out with the XM4s, the XM3s, you know, the XM5s, uh, they, they started getting a bit wonky. I mean, th these are all just new versions of the same mm. over-ear headphone. And we can see, you know, a lot of them kind of start shooting up here, getting way too shouty. Um, you know, the bass is kind of the same on all of them. It's a fluctuating. But there's a lot of fluctuation in the upper mids and a lot of different treble extension problems. So once they get into the highs, you know, we get this, you know, XM4 that's insanely peaky. It dips down way too much around 2.5K. It shoots up way too much around 5K. So it's it's very wonky in this region, um, you know. It's, it's supposed to you know go like this, but it's shooting down, shooting up, 
And then we look at the XM5s. They, uh, in my opinion, they're they're terrible too. They're way up here instead of way down here. You know, it it's cuts down way too extreme. Like this is just a mess. And the upper mids and treble, the upper mids and treble just keep going to crap. And then it rolls off a lot of the highs. When it's, you know, again, it's supposed to be like this. So we've got this cut down, all this prominent crap. You know, this huge roll off. Um, so that's the reason why I chose the XM3s to look at, uh, because, you know, they're a little bit smoother, more transparent, while the XM4s and the XM5s cut down more in this region, and they're much more shouty in the upper mids. So the XM3s were a little bit more controlled in the upper mids than the XM4s and the XM5s. That's the reason why, um, I chose you know, to look at the XM3s instead of the XM4s and the XM5s. So sometimes companies come out with new models of equipment that actually sound worse than predecessors, and that's the reason why a lot of times, like, I buy multiples of audio equipment if I think it sounds good, because you never know when they're going to discontinue it and replace it with garbage.